Danville. Danville. Louisville. Louisville. Danville. <laughs> Lexington. Midway. Versailles. Not Versailles. Versailles. And this is a lesson in how to speak proper Kentuckian, <laughs> which sometimes I kind of need. But we're here at Maker's Mark Distillery just outside Lebanon in Marion County with Eric Gregory, president of the Kentucky Distillers Association. And Eric, we're so happy to be here at the Bourbon Chase. This is amazing. Well, thanks, Tom. We're, I mean, we're glad Bourbon Law could come. But I've never seen bourbon attract people for, you know, a sporty, healthy reason in such numbers like this one. More than 3,000 people. I mean, can you believe this? Last year they capped it at 150 teams. This year they capped it at 200 and something teams. Uh, coming to Kentucky for the bourbon, for the camaraderie, for the spirit, for the race. Uh, overnight relays are the kind of the hottest thing in uh, in running right now, and bourbon's the hottest thing in the country. So it's a perfect combination of the two. And plus, you said it right here in beautiful Central Kentucky, ending up in Lexington, the horse capital of the world, our two signature industries, bourbon and horses. What could be better? And all along the way, you get to see the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. You do from from a vantage point that most people don't really run that far through the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. But what a beautiful trail to see. Well, and you know, most visitors uh, drive by car to the distilleries and uh, you kind of take usually the most efficient path to get here. Um, and Mike Kuntz and the organizers of the Bourbon Chase have done a fantastic job of leading you down the back roads, the scenic byways that really make Kentucky special. And uh, you know, the, the people have been fantastic. They're going to run overnight, you know, and think about it. They're going to run overnight, you know, to our distilleries and then wind up in Lexington uh, tomorrow. I've drank bourbon overnight, responsibly. Thank but you. I've never ran overnight and then had bourbon waiting at the end of the tunnel. So I, it's going to be great to see the look on their faces when they get to have some good Kentucky bourbon. From 5 to 8 tomorrow at Triangle Park in Lexington, uh, we're going to have all six of our legendary distillers there to give them a little more taste of, of uh, Kentucky's finest. I don't think there's any other spirit in the world that could unite people from so many different backgrounds like bourbon does. And we're seeing that through our passport program. Last year, as you know, we set a record for passports on the bourbon trail with 3,000 people completing them. Uh, we've already doubled that mark, 6,000 people as of last week completing the Kentucky Bourbon Trail passport from 49 states and 14 different countries. We're looking probably at about eight or 9,000 by the time the year's over. So uh, a, a tremendous success. We couldn't be happier. And we owe a lot of that to bourbonblog.com. Y'all have been great promoters for our industry. Uh, responsibly, of course, and we appreciate that. This is the typical attire that you would wear running? Uh, yeah, yeah. usually I run in character of some sort. Right. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and how did you decide on this character? Uh, this one, I uh, was just digging through, and uh, I sported this one once before in a marathon and came across it, and I thought I'd wear it for this leg, and uh, I've got a different one for the middle of the night and another one for the, I'm actually the anchor leg at the end. So uh, for the anchor, I'll be wearing my horse. It's a full horse <laughs> and a jockey helmet and some other stuff. So, yeah. Uh, so it seemed like the right thing, such a nice day in October uh, to go maybe with a grass skirt and, uh, and a little flower bra. So, yeah, it seemed to work. Yeah, it's pretty nice bra there, isn't it? Yeah. Do you ever worry that you may be distracting drivers? I, I was most worried at the men who seemed to holler. <laughs> I was okay with the ladies. The van full of men, they made me a little nervous. <laughs> And what do you think so far? So cheers to you guys. Cheers, gentlemen. gentlemen. Cheers to the Bourbon Chase. Cheers Absolutely. To the cheers to Bourbon you. Bourbon Blog. All right, you may know him from being the master distiller of Maker's Mark, and I never have seen this place so happening, Kevin. It, it is incredible. We got perfect day. We've got all these people that are enthusiasts for bourbon that are also crazy runners. That's right. And today is the Bourbon Chase coming through Maker's Mark, Tom. I think a lot of these people are running because when they get all done, they get to try some bourbon That's right. uh, from all the different distilleries. So it's it's just a great thing. It's a nice gift waiting for them at the end of the bourbon chase. It, it sure is. Now, I, th I think some of the Makers Mark team, they've actually hooked it up so that they've got, like, the bottles out in front of them. They're chasing the bottle, hence a bourbon chase, and then they're kind of leading themselves on. Here in a few minutes, we're kind of watching the time because Rob Samuels will be running through. He's running on our bourbon team, and as you know, you know, he's the grandson of, of T.W. Samuels who started Makers Mark, and he's the next generation of, of Makers Samuels uh, that are going to run the distillery, so we're real excited about that. Rob Samuels! He's the eighth generation of the Samuels family to make whiskey here in Kentucky and the director of global development for Maker's Mark. That's right. It's Rob Samuels. He just came to the finish line, or at least the place where they hand off, right? You handed it off. The relay, six miles, got sunshine here in Kentucky, got a team of 12 from uh, employees at the distillery and we're out having a good time. 
That was quite an announcement to, uh, to announce you coming through the finish line. That was fun. I didn't expect that. Does it amaze you sometimes to know just how far that red wax and that name Maker's Mark has gone across the world? Especially when it started out as a hobby. I mean, it, this was the culmination of my grandparents together, their passion. My grandfather being more of an artisan, more of a craftsman than a businessman or even a distiller. But his vision was to, to bring bourbon and good taste together for the very first time. And my grandmother had exquisite taste and she actually provided the name, designed the bottle, and to this day is the only female ever to, uh, to name a whiskey anywhere in the world. But they were both craftsmen and she suggested, since my grandfather was a craftsman, that he should make his mark, the mark of the maker like the pewter makers back in England uh, many years ago as a sign of being handmade. I'm glad they did it because I sure <laughs> like maker's mark. Well, I'm glad she won the argument because he thought it was impractical practical to hand seal every single bottle. But, uh, but she won that argument, and still today, everything's made exactly as it was uh, 60 years ago, all by hand. And a lot of the, uh, the Maker's Mark team, I see they're wearing the red wax dip caps. Yep, got the wax dip caps and uh, stickers for the van and uh, plenty of bourbon in Lexington about 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And that's when we're going to have the bourbon. We only encourage responsible drinking by those who have legal age to drink in their countries or regions. So be safe, be legal, and never drink and drive.